I remember many years ago seeing a film called Ash Wednesday where Elizabeth Taylor played the part of an aging beauty queen. And she discovered that her husband was having an affair. And she thought it was because she was losing her good looks because at the beginning of the film she had a big double chin and she didn't look well. So when he was going off to Switzerland for some business conference she was with him. And while he was at the conference she went to a spa. And the next time you saw her, she looked as only Elizabeth Taylor could look. She looked absolutely stunning. And I remember in the film, it showed the husbands walking down the concourse at the airport, looking out for her. And she stepped out in front of him and started fluttering the eyelids, as much as to say, well, what do you think? <laughs> and I remember in the film, the camera focused on his face, and you could see his jaw dropping. And do you know what he said to her? It's no good, he said. You're still the same old person inside. <laughs> Can you imagine her disappointment, having gone to so much trouble? And yet, in his eyes, she was still the same old person inside. That the external changes didn't really matter. And there's always a temptation for us to focus on the externals. One thing that amazes me at the moment is the amount of excitement that had been generated when we heard that Oasis were coming back again. Well, there's more excitement about the second coming of Oasis than the second coming of Jesus. <laughs> you know, in a hundred years' time, they'll be forgotten about. Nobody's Oasis. Who? Because today's gospel, it's a challenge to us to change from within. Can you imagine if I said now, if I appeared this morning with a big long beard and sandals and a biblical robe on me and said, I'm more like Jesus now. You'd say, come off it. <laughs> You're still the same old person. <laughs> you haven't really changed. That's only an external change. And that's part of the problem. We live in a world where there's so much emphasis on the external change. But the gospel puts before us a different kind of challenge to change our hearts, to change from within. And that should have begun the day of our baptism, when the seeds of eternal life were planted in us. The early word for baptism was called the enlightenment. And in baptism, we were supposed to come into a new relationship with the Lord. Did you ever meet somebody on the street who might say to you, have you been born again? And you weren't quite sure what to say to them. And you're born again in life when you put something or somebody else at the center of your life. One of the things that I hear parents saying is, especially when they have their first child, what did we ever do before we had them? <laughs> How did we pass the time? And now this little child has become the centre of your life. A little whimper and you're up to see are they all right. I know when the second one comes along you'll hope they'll go back to sleep. But, but at that stage, you know, a new little person has taken over the centre of your life. Or do you remember when you were in love first? Do you remember when you saw your boyfriend or girlfriend coming and your heart gave a little jump? You're probably saying it's a long time since my heart jumped, but that's another story. Because there was a new person at the centre of your life, someone that you loved, someone you wanted to be with, someone that was very important to you. And that's what the Gospel is trying to tell us, that that's what we're asked to do with the Lord, to put him at the centre of our lives. And once we do, our lives take on a very different complexion, that we discover a new relationship, something very central. And our life revolves around that person, just as you parents, your life revolves around your children, especially when they were born. They became the centre of your life. Everything you did was about them. You were no longer thinking of yourself. You were thinking of them, providing for them, looking after them, and taking care of them. And that's what today's gospel is about. It's challenging us to try and change from within. Because in the Jewish faith, do you know how many commandments there were? Guess. 613, and you had to obey all of them. And even today, a lot of the Orthodox Jews have a lot of those. Things like that to us would have, you know, you can't lift a heavy burden on the Sabbath. And one rabbi was weighing the amount of meat on your fork to see did it constitute a burden? Was it, was it too heavy? That kind of thing. You cannot open an umbrella on the Sabbath because in the Jewish tradition, 
you couldn't put up a tent or open a tent and they saw an umbrella as a kind of a mobile tent. Or if your cow fell into the drain unless he was dying, you couldn't rescue them. You know, things to us that seem crazy, but they believed that by obeying all of these little regulations that they were following the law. And here was Jesus saying, no lads, you've got it all wrong. Evil doesn't exist outside in that sense. It comes out from within unclean hearts. And that's why the challenge for all of us is to purify our hearts. Even Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That each one of us has to purify ourselves from inside. And maybe we can use that word oasis in a nicer sense, because I'd love to think that every Sunday that you come to the Eucharist, it's a kind of an oasis on your pilgrimage of life. Because an oasis is a place where you rested, you were refreshed, you slept, and you set out again with a new enthusiasm because of the rest and refreshment that you have received. I'd love to think that when you come here to the Eucharist, that that's what happens to you. You're refreshed. First of all, you're forgiven. The Lord reassures you that your sins are forgiven. You hear in the Word of God a word of encouragement. And then the high point, when you come to receive Holy Communion, you're refreshed with the bread of life. We've been hearing those readings for the last few Sundays where Jesus said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. That Jesus renews and refreshes us and sends us back on the journey of life with a new enthusiasm. And that's why it's so important that our Sunday Eucharist would be so central to us, as it is for you. Thank God for that. It should, in one sense, be the highlight of the week. And today, as we listen to the what Jesus said, of all the things that emerge from within, that's where the real battle is. It's often difficult, especially some habit that you've reinforced. Just talk to somebody who's trying to give up cigarettes. How difficult it can be. And when you've reinforced a habit thousands of times, hundreds of times in your life, it can be very hard to break. And that's why we get in the Eucharist the strength we need to come to terms with whatever is wrong in our hearts. I won't go through that list again, but it's pretty comprehensive. But the Gospel tells us when we have a new relationship with the Lord, when he becomes central to us, we have a new strength to fight what's happening within us. Look, there'll always be temptations. That's part of life. As Jesus himself said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's always that battle. And that's why we have to pray. We have to relive our baptism. We have to try to find the inner strength to combat the evils that emerge from within. But thank God, that's what Jesus has done for us. He planted those seeds in us the day of our baptism. And now he wants us, the Eucharist, to renew them, to refresh them, and to become the people that he wants us to be so that by the way we live, we can say to others, this is the truth. And so many, and it's kind of sad to hear it, so many young people in our country is turning now to cocaine, trying to fill that inner emptiness that only God can fill. And if you know somebody, some young person, who is, has taken that path, will you talk to them? Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about your faith. Because we're all in this together. As priests, we can only do so much. But it's up to every baptized person to live the gospel and to be an ambassador for Christ, to live the good news, to tell the young people, and they need to hear it. They need to hear that only God can fill that emptiness that's in their lives. And he's depending on you and me to be his witnesses, to be his ambassadors in a very broken world. So today, we celebrate our faith. We thank God for the way he's touched our lives. And above all, for the challenge he puts before us to deal with that heart, the inner heart, from which evil can emerge unless we're prepared to take steps to stop it. So today, we thank God for our faith. And we pray now for the grace to live it out in our daily lives.